Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we'll be discussing about wireless hacking with Battlecat on Kyle Linux. So what we will do is we'll be able to identify all the SSIDs within the environment and be able to identify all those access points as well as the associated devices that are connected into the access point. And once we have covered all these tracks, what we can do is we can send a de-authentication attack into those associated network devices or IT devices or mobile devices and once we launch the authentication attack, it will disconnect them from the network. And what it will happen is that it will be forced to automatically connect back again into the access point, which will result in a four-way handshake. And we'll capture this four-way handshake. And in a subsequent tutorial, we'll show you how we can crack many of these four-way handshakes so that we can obtain the WPA password. So before we begin, remember to subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of all the cybersecurity tutorials. So without further ado, let us get started on today's tutorial. So I have Kali Linux running and we can go ahead and open up terminal so it's easier for you to see. So we can zoom in a little and all you got to do is enter ifconfig to see all the network interfaces that you have. So make sure that you have a wireless adapter that is connected to your Kali Linux box. So this allows you to use it to actually sniff out for packets in the environment. So the first thing you can do is enter Battlecat followed by iface, dash iface and wlan0 to specify it. And once you do that, we enter into the interactive shell of Battlecat. So the first thing you can do is enter help, and help will tell you all the modules they're running within Battlecat. So here we can see by default events.stream as well as net.reconnaissance has both been running. So what you can do is actually look at the Wi-Fi module over here. So we see that the Wi-Fi module is not running. So the first thing we want to do is to enable it, turn it on. So to turn it on, all you got to do is enter Wi-Fi.recon followed by on. So this would turn on the Wi-Fi sniffing and look at it from a promiscuous mode. So here we can see a lot of information on the new access point being added into the database or into the list of access points that are being sniffed out by the better cap. So an easy way for you to look at it is to enter Wi-Fi.show. So this would actually show you all the wireless access point within the environment. So what we can do is we can zoom out a little and we can see that we actually have all the SSIDs within the environment. So the first one we'll look at is Singtel 105F. So this is the existing Singtel SSID connection that we have. And we see that currently there are zero clients connected to it. So we have to look out for it. We have to sniff out more packets to make sure that we see all the clients association with this particular access point. So sometimes looking at the clients over here, so we see one client when in fact there's actually a lot more connections into this access point wirelessly. So it depends on how fast you're sniffing the kind of traffic that is being transmitted between the mobile device, the laptop device with the access point. So that would determine how fast you can actually pick up the number of clients within the particular access point using Battlecap. So here, once we have captured more and more packets, more and more devices, we can actually see that we have a couple of clients that are being associated with the Singtel 105F SSID. So we can also specify and filter down into more specific channels. So this actually can use help us filter down more information specifically to the target SSID that we're going after. So all you could do is enter set Wi-Fi, or you can actually do set Wi-Fi dot recon followed by dot channel followed by channel tree. So this would set the Wi-Fi reconnaissance to only work on channel tree. However, this will require us to restart the wireless sniffing or the wireless reconnaissance. So in order to speed up the process of looking at how we can perform the authentication attack and capture the four-way handshake, so what we'll do now is we'll actually set some filters in terms of the packet capturing. So the first thing you're going to do is enter set, followed by net.sniff, followed by verbos, followed by true. So this will set the verbosity to true. And the next you do is set net.sniff, followed by dot .filter, followed by ETHER, proto, followed by 0x888E. And then we'll set the output file into set net.sniff.output, followed by WPA.pcap. And then once we've done that, we can actually enter net.sniff followed by on, so this will turn on the sniffing module. So once we have done all this information, we can enter Wi-Fi.show and we can see that we are looking at specifically on client number Singtel 105F SSID and we got three clients connected to it. So we can capture the BSSID information. So we can capture this information and we can do Wi-Fi.dof followed by the information.
So once you hit that, this would actually begin the deauthentication on all the clients that are associated with it. And of course, scrolling up, this is the page where we have the deauthentication attack on the specific addresses that you can see on the MAC addresses, and we can see the Wi-Fi is deauthenticating the client. A new station has been established, and we can see more deauthentication, and we can see it's probing for SSID and so on. And of course, we can see a Wi-Fi dot client handshake has been captured. And we can see again another Wi-Fi dot client dot handshake, another handshake again. So this would actually help us complete the investigation into the handshake on the information. So once we are done that, we can actually exit into BattleCap. And once we exit BattleCap, you can actually open up your folder. And in your folder, you can actually see that you have a WP dot PCAP information or PCAP file. And from this file in your root directory, you can actually open up with Wireshark. And once we open it up with Wireshark, we can see the information here, and we can see there is a source destination, and we can see the key size. So, like I mentioned earlier, we'll do about the password cracking on the subsequent tutorial. So there you see it. How quickly we could actually perform a listing of all the SSIDs as well as the associated devices, and perform a deauthentication attack that allow us to actually save the four-way handshake password. And once we save the password, we'll be able to crack them on subsequent tutorials using some of the different methods and methodologies, understanding about how these passwords are actually saved. So I hope you've learned something valuable today in today's tutorial. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of those questions. So remember to share, like, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the cybersecurity tutorial.